It's less than seven days before voters in the city of Charleston's District 6 choose a new council member. In this edition of Quintin's Post-Ups, I sit down with candidate and current council member William Dudley Gregory. And be sure to download the free Quintin's Post-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Well, it's so good to see you again. It's always good to see you, Quint. I appreciate this. I appreciate it. I oh, really do. Oh, you're welcome anytime. I mean, we got, what, six days to go? <laughs> Who is William Dudley Gregory now as a candidate? William Dudley Gregory is still William Dudley Gregory. Um, there's no change. Um, I'm all about making sure that we do what's best for our neighborhoods. And speaking of neighborhoods, obviously we're sitting here at Longboro Park in downtown Charleston. Yes. And I know that there's some developments going on with that. Yes. What in your mind can you share with me? Actually, uh, the, the dock that we're sitting on right now, um, hopefully we'll refurbish it. Mm. Uh, we are now, meaning the city is now in negotiations with the HOA to try to make sure that this area continues to be public through a public-private partnership with the Homeowners Association here in Long, Longborough. What is the future of this particular park? Um, I know that the HOA uh, wants to try to have some boat slips. Um, and what we're doing now is studying whether or not that's possible. I think that it is. And if we can swing a deal uh, between the city and the HOA where we would put in the boat slips so that this precious treasure could remain a public space for all to enjoy. Mm. Let me take you back to October 24th and refresh your memory. This is the headline from the Post and Courier. Charleston City Council races on James Island get bloody as outdoor groups weigh in. Um, this is probably my seventh um, uh, race and out of all of them this is the most disingenuous um, race I've ever been a part of. Uh, there are outside groups, uh, many of whom are not a part of the island, uh, that are trying to sway this election. Um, I do believe that we are one island, okay. just like we're one Charleston, sure. and that all of the entities make up the whole, so that we have to work together. And I look forward to uh, working with uh, Save James Island. Um, I'm a supporter of Save James Island. Sure. Uh, right now, we're just in disagreement. Uh, like any family, we have a disagreement. And um, I'm just hoping that after the election, uh, either way, that we can then come back together as a family and make sure that we do what's best for District 6 and what's best for the downtown neighborhoods and also what's best for the James Island neighborhood. You know, when I talked with Kathleen Wilson yesterday, she, I asked her how much power does she have because a lot of people think that these outside groups have power right now. How much power do you have? I don't have any power. The only persons that have power are the neighborhoods that make up this district. They will make the final decision as to who they think is best to serve them. I think that experience matters, and I bring an unbelievable amount of experience to the table. We don't have time as neighborhoods to start over. And with my background and my being on council since 2009, right. we have too many things in the pipeline. And if we change in midstream, many of those things will never come to fruition. And obviously a lot of people, if you, when you hear on Facebook or whatnot, are basically saying, hey, a lot of lies are coming out from both sides. Mm -hmm. What is fact, fact and what is fiction in your mind? Um, I have been trying my best to um, stay high when they go low um, because I think that's the only way that we can make sure that the people of this district understand the truth. Um, I've learned early on to never repeat a negative, so I'm not going to repeat some of the negatives that are out there with regard to not only myself, uh, but also Councilmember Wilson. Uh, this is a race to the end, <clears throat> and I'm going to attempt to not go low, not to fabricate, 
stories uh, with regard to my opponent. Uh, I respect her, but I will not lie on her. And you actually told the Postal Courier this, quote, how can I be all about development when I am with my residents in the neighborhoods, trying to fight uh, developments and the number of units we can put in? So where are we with development on James Island? Um, development on James Island is still going on, but I do think that the uh, moratorium uh, that Kathleen and I backed, right. uh, that we voted on, we just didn't talk about it, we voted on it, will decrease density substantially on the island, especially in the commercial zone along Folly Road. Right. And of course, I support the Folly Road overlay. Right. Okay. Um, I also think that given what our zoning laws currently are, you can't wave a magic wand and say stop development. So what we've been attempting to do is to work with the developers within the law, within the zoning, to try to get them to reduce density. And that's been working. Um, it's worked with the standard uh, that could have built almost 400 units and we got them down to uh, about 290 units. Mm -hmm. It's worked with the core, which is a future development coming online. So the approach that we've been using is to work within the law and to try to negotiate with developers who have property rights to down the number of developments or units that they would put in their development. And that's been working. It's not been working to everybody's satisfaction, okay. but we are not going to be able to satisfy everyone because the developers do have rights. Uh, and what we do is just attempt to negotiate them down in terms of the number of apartment units that they put on their site. You talk, and that's been working. And you talk about developers, but you know, some people may say, hey, are you, I mean, are they con contributing to your campaign? When you hear that, what do you say? I said no. Everyone contributes to my campaign. Okay. Um, I don't know, uh, well, maybe a couple. There are okay. a couple of people that develop properties that might have contributed to my campaign. Uh, but that's just like anybody else. Um, I'm not for sale. Um, and anyone that contributes to my campaign or anyone that knows my integrity knows I'm not for sale. I'm about making sure that we do what's best for our neighborhoods and the residents in our neighborhoods. I put our neighborhoods and our residents first over anything. Speaking of which, let me go back to this particular article uh, from the Charleston City Paper on October 24th. Charleston voters face a 20 million decision on affordable housing in upcoming election. 20 million tells you what, Dudley? 20 million dollar tells me that there is a future for housing for people who generally would not be able to afford it in the city. Um, right now, like most cities, we have a shortage of affordable units. And this 20 million dollar referendum, if it passes, it would provide the city with an op opportunity to partner with nonprofits. Uh, to develop over 800 affordable units throughout the city. And these are units that would be for your teachers, for the service industry, sure. uh, who is spending enormous amounts of money just in transportation to get to and from work on the peninsula. This $20 million referendum would give some relief. So I think it's very, very important. I support it. Uh, council supported it overwhelmingly. Sure. And I hope that the people come out on Tuesday and vote for this referendum because it will give some relief to affordability in our city. And I've known you for many, many, many years. Yes, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but for, who knows, who do, for those who don't know, describe William Dudley Gregory. Um, William Dudley Gregory is a person that is a public servant. I think that we all have a calling in life and that calling is divine. I learned over 30 something years ago that my calling is public service and I want to continue to serve the public as best that I can if reelected to make sure that we have a city that is safe, uh, that we have a city where the quality of life is protected, where livability is protected. Okay. Uh, livability and quality of life has been the centerpiece of our elections. 
but I think that if people check the record, I mean, the fact that you and I are sitting here and I'm fighting to keep this space public tells you where I am with regard to making sure that our quality of life and our livability is sustained in the city of Charleston. We don't have time right now to start over. And there's so much that we're doing in our neighborhoods. You have to know and understand the neighborhood in order to lead. I have been in the trenches in these neighborhoods since 2009, and we've accomplished too much, but we've got much more to do. We cannot change horses in midstream. Speaking of much more to do, if you were to be reelected, what will be your first vote on council? It's hard to say. Uh, it depends upon the agenda. But I can tell you what my initiatives will be over the next four years. It's all about flooding. It's all about the water. It's about trying to identify additional revenues, not tax hikes on property owners. Let's dispel that rumor now but to try to find out where we may have some bonding capacity okay. so that we can accumulate at least a hundred million dollars in order to fix the flooding on James Island. The flooding on James Island is very different than the flooding downtown because we have a ditch system. We need to make sure that those ditches are clean. We need to make sure that if the pipes are too small, that those pipes should be increased in size. Okay. There's no excuse for anybody's house to flood anywhere in this city because the ditches are not maintained and clean. The only way we're gonna do that is to try to identify some revenue. And I think I have some ideas to do that because we have about four mills in bonding capacity okay. in our storm water drainage okay. <coughs> program. Uh, and if we could utilize just that four mil, it could produce almost uh, uh, 50, 50 million dollars in revenue if we were to bond that out. 50 million dollars would go a long way to fix the flooding, not just on James Island, sure. but West Ashley, right. um, John's Island, uh, where we have pretty prevalent flooding problems. You see what happened on, in West Ashley, right. uh, where now we have to buy homes because they've been flooding and costly uh, to the residents for three or four years now. We've got to move forward with a bold, bold plan for addressing flooding citywide, not just downtown. That's not to say that in Wagner Terrace, where we are right now, right that the city has not been working on our pump stations along Wagner, because they have, and it's improved things substantially in Wagner Terrace. But we need to put some focus on the island. That's why I still say, even when we pass the uh, uh, Folly Road overlay to reduce density, we still have work to do. We've got to make sure that flooding and zoning and development work in harmony. If we don't, we're going to continue to flood our roads with traffic. Uh, we're going to continue to negatively affect our quality of life. So for me, you're going to see if the constituents of District 6 wants me to continue to represent them, I will be boldly moving toward identifying revenue so that we can have some bonding capacity and fix the flooding in many of the neighborhoods that have been plagued with flooding throughout this city. Wagner Terrace, we have Gordon Street, right. which is a lakefront. Yeah, We've got Moultrie Street, right. which is a lakefront. We've done some great things in our city with regard to flooding but we need to start coming into our neighborhoods. We've done a lot of things on the peninsula uh, with regard to making sure that the pen peninsula is fine because that is our crown jewel. That is what brings the revenue into our city. But we've got to now concentrate on the livability and the quality of life 
of the folks in the neighborhoods. And I'm not saying that we haven't been doing anything. I'm just saying that we've got to now do more. We've got to boldly go and attack this water like it's never been attacked before. Because I do think that that is our number one challenge in this city, or the waters will reclaim it. William Dudley Gregory, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Anytime. Okay, brother. Thank you.